In this last video of the Mark II series, I want to talk about some different ways that I have sort of figured out for performing my projects in a live setting. Um, I do a lot of YouTube videos on my own channel, I'm performing my different projects, and I kind of develop this sort of style for showing how the projects sound in real time. Um, now, of course, there's like some keyboard drumming, sort of live performance techniques that you can learn, but that is an entire series in its own. Um, so I wanted to use this video to sort of talk about the way I perform using machines features and not really a, a live performance in the way that everything is being sequenced in real time, um, but just a way to sort of showcase your projects and, and give the listener sort of a experience that's not just listening to a pre-recorded track. So this is all going to revolve around the scene function. I basically do all my performance by sort of creating and editing scenes on the fly. Um, so it really helps to be comfortable with that scene function, the different buttons that you need to press. And also before you start performing, you really need to know your project in and out. Um, you sort of get the colors down if you have one of the, the later versions of machine and sort of just know where things are and how they are structured. And, and um, labeling all your patterns in your groups helps do that as well. Um, so if you go into my patterns here, you can see that I have different names for my patterns and my groups are all named. Now before we get into this too much, um, make sure we have our settings right. It's just one quick little toggle here. Go into the grid, um, make sure that you have the scene option selected. And this is going to, oh, make, make sure I'm perform, sorry. Um, this is going to make sure that one scene finishes entirely before it goes on to the next one. And that is going to allow us to sort of create this project as it goes. Um, so I've loaded up a new project from the one that I've been working on. This one is just a little bit more developed, a little bit more um, more stylistic of something that I would do. And this has a, a um, sort of like a synth drone on this group. On my group B is just full of different instruments. Group C is my drums. And group D is a little reverse piano effect that I throw in once in a while. Um, so the, the way I'm going to do this is just I'm um, going to my scene menu here and delete all of these scenes. Now I sort of have a blank slate to work from and I can figure out how I want to start this performance. Um, so what I'm going to do here is create a, a scene here. There's already one loaded up here and I just want to start with my synth drone. Um, when you're performing these kind of think of how you want to start your project, how you want to get it rolling. Um, so what I want to do here is just um, load it in my my pattern this with just this drone and I'm also going to go into the mixer by pressing shift and sampling um, and bring down my volume so I can sort of fade this in as it goes. So throughout this video I'll be pausing this just to sort of keep you updated how the performance is going um, but keep in mind that if I was actually doing this this would all be in one seamless take. Um, so anyways like I said I'm going to play back my first pattern and then just bring in the drone sort of faded in with the volume. So that's going to sound something like this. I'll go ahead and start it. And now as the scene is playing, I'm going to go ahead, press the scene button, and then duplicate this. And now this is going to let me work on an additional scene as this previous scene is finishing up. Um, so I have some time to sort of get all of my elements in order. Um, so after that I fade this in, I want to work with my next scene and then bring in um, some different instruments, maybe just the bass. So I'll select my pattern that's just bass, and then I'll go ahead and resume playback. So now that this scene is going, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process, duplicate this, and then just change anything that I want in this new scene. Um, so I'm actually going to so add my drums here. I'll go to my drum group and select um, my, my sort of basic drum pattern here. And I'm also going to go ahead and exit the mixer here and bring down, I have a filter on my drum group. I'm going to bring down, um, bring down the cutoff frequency and then bring in my drums using this filter sweep. So it sounds something like this. So as I'm playing and replaying this project, it's not going to give um, sort of a full idea of what this performance is going to look like. So I'm actually going to go back, um, delete this pattern, and just give you an idea of how I create the pattern as the previous one is finishing up. Um, so I'll start with my basic one, and then as that's playing, I'll go ahead and create a new one and fade it in. So I'll show you how I do that now. Now I'm just 
waiting for the scene to finish up. And so you can see I basically have a certain amount of time to work with before the machine switches over to the next scene. Um, it allows me to get everything in line and sort of create those nice transitions. Um, so now I have my project sort of playing, um, I have the drums going, I have a develop pattern with the instruments, and I'm just going to, uh, to play this back and then do that process again. Um, create a new scene, change anything I want, and then um, have it switch over when it's ready to go. So I'll go ahead and do that now. we go so we're off the project is going everything is playing and we've sort of brought in elements one by one faded them in using volume sweeps and using filter sweeps and it's just this nice performance and it's nice because you're actually doing stuff on the machine um, so you're, you're engaged as well as creating a very nice sounding performance um, so when things are going you can go ahead and maybe break it down a little bit in the middle just to keep things interesting um, so maybe I'll, um, I'll create a new scene and then add some stuff or take some stuff out um, sort of deleting patterns or maybe soloing things. Um, you can use the mute and solo buttons here. Um, so maybe I'll go ahead and play with those and just show you some different options. <music> So in addition to just playing back your pre-recorded patterns, you can also do some live playing. Um, say I just wanted to do a kick and a snare because I don't have one of those patterns already, I could go ahead and just add that in over top of the other patterns. So those are just some ideas that I use when I'm performing my projects. Uh, it's nice to use the arrangement features and the sort of mute solo volume things, all the different hands-on controls that machine offers to add a, a real-time sort of live element to your projects. Um, rather than just playing them back, you're actually engaged with it and your viewers will notice that. Um, I think it's a really cool experience to actually perform your piece rather than just play it back. Um, so that is the last video in the Mark II series um, there's probably some stuff that I didn't cover. Undoubtedly, Machine is full of different features that it's really hard to get through all of them. Um, so if you have any specific questions, you can go ahead, leave comments, or shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to go into any other features that you're wondering about. So as always, thank you for watching, and thank you for the support. Hopefully this series of videos has gotten you started with the Machine, as well as just with music production in general. Um, so make sure to stay tuned to this channel. Lots more videos to come.